Hello, hello, and welcome back to yet another episode on GMAT Friday with IMS International. I hope your GMAT preparation is going well. You know the drill. Here's the question for you. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then resume to look at the solution. All right, so this is the classic question of allegations and the concept of averages. Now, many people might not be able to deduce that this question could be solved via the concept of allegation. But if you know the concept of allegation, this question could be done in probably a minute. So before we start solving this question, let me walk you through the entire concept of allegation. All right. Now, what is allegation? Uh, I'll try to explain that to you in very, very simple terms. So let's say there are two brands of rice. There is brand A and there is brand B. Brand A is costing 60 rupees per kg and brand B is costing let's say 90 rupees per kg. Now there is this vendor who is buying both these brands and is trying to mix both of them so that the price comes down. I mean I think so this is a very common thing to understand that if we are mixing two brands the price is obviously going to reduce. It is going to be lesser than the highest price and it is going to be more than the lowest price. So what I am trying to say is that if I mix 60 and 90 the new price is going to be somewhere between 60 and 90. It cannot be more than 90, it cannot be less than 60, right? So let's say the shopkeeper aims to get a price of 70 rupees per kg after mixing both these brands. Now the problem is the shopkeeper is thinking that vendor is thinking in what ratio should I mix both these brands? Should I take 1 kg of brand A and let's say 10 kgs of brand B? That uh, doubt is always going to be there in his mind. So that is where the concept of allegation would be helpful to the vendor. All right. Now the next two to three minutes are going to be slightly boring where I would be explaining the entire concept. So if you want, you can always skip this part if you are thorough with this, uh, with this uh, topic or else please uh, try and understand what allegation is. So let's try to give name to all, uh, all of these terms. Let's say this 60 is known as PC, that is price of the cheaper quality rice. This 90 is PD, that is price of the dearer quality rice. And this 70 is let's say PM, that is the mean price which we want to achieve. Now, what was the dilemma in the shopkeeper's mind? in what quantity should I be mixing both brand A and brand B. So let's say the quantity that we are taking of brand A is QC, the quantity that we are taking of brand B is let's say QD and the final quantity that we are making is QM, right. Uh, now what does the shopkeeper want? That after mixing both these brands the final price should be equal to 70. So let's use that law of equality to uh, derive a formula. Now, let's say of brand A, the shopkeeper is purchasing 5 kgs. So how much is he going to spend? 60 into 5, that is 300. So therefore, if the price is PC and the shopkeeper is purchasing QC quantity, the total amount that he is spending is PCQC. And similarly, in case of the dearer rice, he is, uh, he is spending PD times QD. So that is the total money he is spending. And this must be equal to what? This must be equal to PM times QN. Now one good thing is that since he is mixing brand A and brand B, QM is going to be nothing but QC plus QD. I mean, how uh, whatever is the uh, number of kgs of brand A and whatever is the number of kgs of brand B that he is taking, that is what is being mixed, right? So QM is going to be nothing but QC plus QD. So let me write that. So PCQC plus PDQD is equal to PM times QC plus QD. Now let's open the brackets. What do we get? So PCQC plus PDQD is equal to PMQC plus PMQD. Coming back to our original problem statement, what did the shopkeeper want? In what ratio should I mix both these brands? So we want the ratio of QC and QD. So let's put all the like terms together. So this would be what? PDQD minus PMQD is equal to PMQC 
minus PCQC, right? I'm uh, writing it over here. Uh, taking out QD common, what do am I left with? PD minus PM. This must be equal to taking out QC common, PM minus PC. So that gives me QC over QD is equal to PD minus PM over PM minus PC. Now the fun part is you don't have to remember this formula. Sounds very, very confusing, sounds very, very difficult to remember, but you don't even have to remember this formula. But for the time being, let's uh, plug in those values and let's be done with this question. So uh, QC over QD would be what? We have the value of PD that is 90 minus we have the value of PM that is 70. We have the value of PM that is 70 and we have the value of PC that is equal to 60. So this becomes 20 over 10 and which on simplification gives me 2 is to 1. So the point is brand A and brand B needs to be mixed in the ratio 2 is to 1 for the shopkeeper to achieve and a final price of 70 rupees per kg. I mean, plug in some values, take let's say 20 kgs of brand A and 10 kgs of brand B, you will find that the 30 kgs is costing you 70 rupees per kg, right? Now, coming to uh, the shorter way of solving this entire thing, and this is where you can resume the video if you have skipped the first part. Uh, there's an easier way of doing this, but that easier way was derived from this formula only. So, let's understand that. So, what was our problem statement? Brand A and brand B. Brand A was 60 per kg, brand B was 90 per kg and the final price that we wanted was 70 rupees per kg. So, you don't have to do anything, you just have to draw these lines and follow this line. Which is the bigger number? 70 is the bigger number. So, you subtract 60 from 70 and write it over here. So That is what? 10. And you follow this line. 90 minus 70 that is what 20 the ratio is what 2 is to 1 so therefore brand a and brand b needs to be mixed in the ratio 2 is to 1 for us to achieve a mean price of 70 so this is what is expected of you in the examination that you are able to uh, do uh, this concept of allegation and not the previous one where we derived the entire formula right now, where would this be used? In a lot of questions of averages. So, for example, uh, there have been questions asked in the GMAT. Uh, there are two classrooms. In classroom A, the average score of all the students was, let's say, 80 marks. And in classroom 2, the average score of all the students was 93 marks. And overall, if I combine both the classrooms A and classroom B, the average score of all the combined students were uh, was 85 marks. Now, what was the ratio of the number of students in classroom A and classroom B? Now, if we go for the classical approach, it's going to take a lot of time. But if we knew this concept, what are we supposed to do? This is going to be 5. This is going to be 8. So, classroom A and classroom B, they have their students in the ratio 8 is to 5. So, maybe in 20 to 30 seconds, you are able to solve this particular question. In fact, this can also be asked in concepts of uh, profit and loss. So, for example, there is a shopkeeper who has a lot of goods, one part he is selling at let's say 20% profit and the other part, the remaining part at a loss of let's say 10% and overall he is able to make a 15% profit. Find out in what ratio did he sell his goods. Now again if you go by the classical approach, it is going to take a lot of time. How are we going to solve this now? With the concept of allegation. So, he made a profit of 20% in the first case. He made a loss of 10%. So, I will not be writing 10 over here, but I would be writing minus 10 over here. And overall, he is making a profit of 15. So, we follow this line 20 minus 15, that would be 5. And 15 minus minus 10, that would be 15 plus 10. And that gives me 25. So, this ratio is what? 5 is to 1. So, therefore, if 5 parts of the goods were sold at 20% profit, one part of the good was sold at 10% loss. So, this is the concept of allegation. I hope you were able to understand this. Now, we are going to be using this same concept 
in the question that was asked to us. So, at a certain fruit stand, the price of each apple is 40 cents. Okay, so there's my value 1 and the price of each orange is 60 cents. Okay, so we are dealing with two types of fruits. Just like we dealt with two brands of rice, we are dealing with two kinds of fruits. Uh, so, apples and we have got oranges. Apples are costing Mary a total of 40 cents and oranges are costing her 60 cents. Mary selects a total of 10 apples. Okay, so we have been given a quantity over here as well. So, Mary selects a total of 10 apples and oranges from the fruit stand. The sad part is we don't know how many oranges she bought, how many apples she bought. But a total of 10 fruits were bought by her. And the average price of the 10 pieces of fruits is 56 cents. Okay. So, I'll stop right over here and then let's try and make sense of the data given to us. So, this would be what? This would be 16. This would be what? This would be 4. So, therefore, the ratio is 1 is to 4. That means if she bought one apple, she was buying a total of 4 oranges. That is what the ratio of 1 is to 4 means. Now, one good thing is we know the total number of fruits. She is buying 10 fruits and the ratio of them is 1 is to 4. Therefore, I hope your concepts of ratios are in place. And therefore, she would have bought two apples and she would have bought eight oranges. That is what she did initially. All right. Now, let's move further. How many oranges must Mary put back so that the average price of the pieces of the fruit that she keeps is 52 cents? Okay. Same problem statement. Only the average price is changing now. So, 40 and 60 and she wants the average price to be 52. So, this must be 12 and this must be 8. So, therefore, the ratio is 2 is to 3. So, therefore, the number of apples and oranges must be in the ratio 2 is to 3 for her to achieve an average price of 52. Now, many people make an error exactly over here. What do they get? They tell that, okay, Anirudh, there are 4 apples and there are 6 oranges and she had 8 oranges earlier. So, therefore, she will have to uh, return 2 oranges. You are not doing that over here. Over here, the total number of fruits are still 10. But if she is returning something, she is not replacing. She is returning something, the number of fruits will be reducing, right? So, therefore, we have to keep that in mind while answering this particular question. So, uh, she had two apples initially and eight oranges with her. Now, the ratio should be two is to three. We cannot change the number of apples, right? So, if she had two apples... And the final ratio still has to be 2 is to 3. The number of apples will have to be 2. And the number of oranges, the new number of oranges will have to be 3. That is when the ratio of 2 is to 3 will, uh, would be achieved without affecting the number of apples she purchased. Because she is only returning back the oranges. She is not returning back any apple. So, there were 2 apples. There has to be 2 apples till the end. Alright, so if she had 8 oranges in the beginning and she is having 3 oranges finally, how many oranges will she have to return? I hope the answer is very clear. That is 5 oranges. So therefore, option E would be answer to this particular question. I hope you were able to solve this question and were able to understand this entire concept. If you like this content, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.